How have you been? I've been really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Welcome to Nexus Talks. Uh, I'm really happy that we get to do this again. We already mentioned that we had some tech issues before, but again, I get to talk to you all over again, which is amazing. So please introduce yourself to everyone who might not have heard of you. Well, I'm glad to be here. So thank you, first of all. Um, but yeah, my name is Lila Begum. I am an actress, filmmaker, and I would say content sort of like creator, project manager. I've worked on several different sort of like projects across the board. So it's kind of hard to put it in one, I suppose. It gets like that. You start somewhere, yeah. then you end up somewhere else, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. So let's start there. Is that what you always wanted to do? Yeah. I mean, I don't really know how I fell in love with it because I feel like I was one of those kids that just always had a vivid imagination. Like I could play by myself. I could play with kids. Like I was always that kid that was like, let's pretend the floor is lava. You cannot step on the floor. And I was like so strict with the rules. Like it was like totally, it, I am engulfed in this Im world of imagination. Um, and then I think I just love performing. I mean, do you know what? I'll tell you something really embarrassing actually. <laughs> Before I decided that I actually wanted to fully submerge in acting, I just, at some point I just wanted to perform. So I did try different things. And when I was like a teenager, maybe about like, I don't know, like 13 or something like that. I, I thought I wanted to be an MC. So I used to like write bars and try. <laughs> I'm just learning more and more about you. Okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At one point, I thought I wanted to be an MC. Then I even did like um, a VJing course because I thought maybe I'd want to DJ. Like I've tried so many different things. Like I, ha I do write poetry. I do sort of like spoken word poetry, but that's more for... I guess my relief and more for sort of like my therapy rather than performing it now. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and I used to bar. And then at one point I was, I thought I wanted to like dance. So I joined a street dance group. It was called Stampede Girls. Oh. Really loved my time there. <laughs> yeah, but I, I kind of like realized as I was going through these, this sort of like process that people that I looked up to were like really amazing at what they were doing. And, you know, sometimes you've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to be you know, that, that kind of Simon Cowell voice and just have that honest talk with yourself. And I realised I'm not, I'm not a singer. I tried singing. I'm not going to sell out tours like Beyonce. Like, yeah, I enjoyed rapping, but, you know, compared to the people that I enjoyed listening to, my lyrical content was not there. Like, I, I weren't doing what they were doing. So it's just like I tried all of these things and I realised, like, no, I'm actually good at acting and this is where I get my praise. Um, and this is where I get my recognition and people actually say I'm good at something. So it's like, through trying all of these different things, that's, that's where I kind of found home. I could ask so many follow-up questions. I don't even know what to ask first. I've got like 10 questions pinging. First of all, can you give me a bar? One of the ones you've written before and performed before. Oh God, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> um, so as a kid, I didn't really like perform it, but I kind of, <clears throat> so I, I kind of went through a lot of trauma and stuff as a kid. I was a little bit just, a little bit weird. And I think one of my bars was something crazy, like, I'm a soldier from the army. I've just escaped to kill your family. Like, so how old were you? I was like 13. That sounds like a 13 year old's bar, by the way, like all that anger. I hear I was, it. I was such an angry kid. And I'd like, you know, like you go through stages of like bullying and like, you know, find it really hard to fit in and stuff like that. And it's like, I guess that's what those were the emotions that I was feeling. And at that time, you know, like it was, I grew up during the time of like grime. So it was like, that was, that's what I was listening to. And, you know, it kind of, I don't know, it helped kind of with my expressing my anger in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy stuff. No, uh, thank you for sharing. And you also mentioned that you weren't, that you got your praise, it, your praises in acting. So, you know, you're the Simon Cow voice in your own head. Do you not think that, I mean, just coming across from what you've said, I feel like you could probably smash anything you tried. And I love that you did try a few things. Do you think you gave yourself a chance? Because you were like, I'm not getting my praises there. Let me just stick to acting. Tell me a bit more about that. I mean, I, I gave it a good shot, you know, yeah. like I gave it a good shot. Like even with like the street dance, you know, I joined, I, I joined an actual dance crew and I went That's training so cool. four times a week, you know, like I really wanted to do shows and stuff. But 
you look at, you know, someone that dances with natural talent and their passion, like the same passion and drive I had for acting is what they had in dance, which enabled them to move more organically and more naturally. Whereas I could see in myself that I wasn't moving like that. And yes, with more, I think with more practice, anybody can get really good, but it's that essence that makes you, you different. I get you. You know, and it's like when I look, at all the other dancers that were there and they were like no this is my thing this is what I want to succeed and I realized like that same passion you have in this is what I have in acting is what I have in drama like that's where all of those emotions come together and not only am I good at it but I feel at home at it like you know there was um, a time where I was studying at WAC Arts and we had a I think one like one of those end of year shows and we was doing Shakespeare at the time. So we was doing measure for measure. <clears throat> and in that scene, when we was performing it, because it's live theater, in that moment, I forgot I was acting. Wow. Like I was so there in that moment. It was only when I caught a glimpse of the audience from the corner of my eye, like something in me was like, oh, this ain't real. Oh, you're acting. And I was like, oh, damn. And I was like, well, anyway, forget about that. Let's get back in the moment. And it's like, I don't know I think sometimes when you go through certain things in life you you look for places where you know like place things that soothe you mm. and as a kid um you know I didn't get into sort of like drugs heavily or drink heavily I mean obviously you try um alcohol and stuff out when you're growing up but my thing lucky for me was acting it was a place where I could go and I guess be somebody else it was escapism I think mm -hmm. that's what it was yeah it was I can play anybody else I don't have to be me for those that that time or that time that I'm there and also whack arts I, I'm so grateful because it the environment that I was in as well contributed towards that so mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> going to a place and I went by myself I didn't go with my friends I decided this is what I want to do so I went there and I found other kids that were just like me we weren't bad kids but we was a little bit troubled if you get what I mean because yeah. of certain things that were happening in our lives but essentially we knew we had a passion for something and we was able to find other kids that were similar to us that you know understood us that were you could be yourself with but we encouraged each other to stay and do more and be better like have finding that sort of like balance really really helped and you know I give so much praise to Wack Arts I, I don't know where if I didn't go there every Sunday, I don't know what I would have been doing. Yeah. And did anything draw you to acting? I know you mentioned why you love it and you feel at home, but what initially made you even think, you know what, I want to try that? Was there a person in your life that inspired you? Well, my family are really into watching films. So like growing up in my home, because I come from um, a Bangladeshi background. So at home growing up, we were playing like Bollywood movies. So all my family loved Bollywood. And you know, Bollywood is so colorful. It's so pretty and beautiful and just so theatrical. Yeah. So it's like, I've got the theatrics from that. My granddad loved watching um, Western movies. So we used to sit there watching Westerns. My mom's really into films and like TV shows as well from like Pyro to like, you know, watching bread, um, what's it? Broom, lots of bed knobs and broomsticks like yeah. watching all of these sort of like classic films that had like all the singing and the dancing and again like as because my whole family watched films I naturally grew, grew up to watch films and I just loved the way that actors embodied the characters and brought a truth like yeah. I, I know the word acting is all about acting and pretending essentially but I really like sort of like the Meisner technique, which brings in sort of like an element of truth. So in order for that story to be conveyed, that actor needs to find the truth within themselves in order for you to believe it. Yeah. And the journey that that actor goes on, like, for example, like Million Dollar Baby, what an amazing film. And that actor had to train to become a boxer, to become convincing, like, you know, like actors don't just kind of wake up and be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to do this. It takes a lot of physical work. And I guess because I'm quite a physical person in terms of I like doing things with my hands, I like being physically sort of active with my body. Again, it attracted me to I can become and I can physically and mentally become anything and I can create an environment that could be anything. Yeah. Like it's again, it's sort of like, I don't know, you're the it's storytelling, but in like 4D. Yeah. 
<laughs> I love how passionate you get, by the way. You go on a little journey. Yes. Yeah. So, so, no, 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 you're not. Do you know what it is as well? Like, you've picked such a difficult industry as well. Like, being an actor, you need super thick skin, so much training, so much it's like practice, so many different experiences. So, I can just see how how much you love the space you're in which I think is so important because it's not always you know getting roles left right and center there's a lot of grinding that comes to it and you're trained in both theater and film which is your favorite medium let's talk about that oh gosh it's hard it's so hard I mean I really love theater and I absolutely adore watching theater like I absolutely adore it like I even I got a ticket to um I read Pitch the other day and I just went on my own because I was like, I really want to watch the show. Um, and I just went because I was like, I love it. So I really enjoy watching Fierce, but I don't know. I I prefer screen acting. And I guess, it, again, it's I guess it's because of the naturalism that screen acting allows you to do. And I feel really bad for saying, I feel so bad for saying it because I grew up in theatre. I love theatre. Like I would... I would definitely go back to doing theatre if I thought that was an amazing opportunity or I really loved the story and I wanted to be a part of telling that story. I would definitely do theatre. Um, but with screen, you know, it's it's a different place of make-believe. It's like I'm, I'm such a Lord of the Rings kind of like fantasy, sci-fi kind of like fan. Yeah. And like, <laughs> so anything's like that, Stranger Things. And, you know, with the technology and everything that film has, like, it's just amazing, isn't it? Like the way things that they create, how the emotions that they can invoke through sort of like screens, even sort of like monsters and stuff like that. When you look back at um, past sort of like say Alien versus Predator, for example, and how technology has improved so much yeah. that now when you look at the same character, you're like, whoa, yeah. like this looks real. Do you remember your first role? Like, do you remember the feeling? Tell me how you got it. Tell me all. My first role. On screen role, actually. Let me be specific. On screen. Oh, on screen role. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I was so excited. So I, my first on screen role was for um, a documentary, actually. It was called Lady Killers. And I was in like episode, I think like four or something like that. And it was about this lady um, who had an affair with a guy that was renting her apartment. It's a real life story. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, <clears throat> she was having an affair with this guy. And, you know, he was a lot younger than her. She's obviously married. But I think I can't remember if her partner was poorly or not. But she was clearly married, um, older lady. And she got jealous that he ended up getting... Um, I think it was an arranged marriage to a, to someone that's his age. So I played his sort of like younger partner. Oh, right. And, um, yeah. And we did like the reenactment scenes because she like poisons them and stuff like that. It's so insane. So like, it, it's so insane. So we had to like, yeah, I had to like pretend like I've never been poisoned before. So we was all trying that's to like. Good. <laughs> yeah. <That's> good. <laughs> if you know that, that feeling of like imagining how would I feel? Yeah. What, what, would, what would I physically be going through? And they were like talking me through it and stuff. And it was just, I don't know, it was just so awesome. It was just such a cool, cool sort of like project to work on. It was something really interesting. It was something like that's to do with real life. Yeah. I got to, you know, got to do things that I'd not done before. You know, sometimes as much as you learn in drama school and stuff like that, when you're on set and you, you're you doing the job, no one can, can like prepare you for like how that's going to go down. Cool. So I was just like really happy I was working with a really good team I think it was like first look tv they were great um and yeah it was just such a fun project and then when it came out I was just like oh my god this is like my first thing it's on like national tv and it was on like I think quest channel or red channel and they were like yeah it's gonna play in America and I was like wow I was, I think I was ecstatic <laughs> I'm sure and how did you get that role because one thing like actors aspiring actors any actor actually really struggles with is sometimes how do I get my first role or how do I get my next role yeah that was through my agent you know I need to big up my agent Mel Melanie Gale talent because this woman is absolutely incredible and I think it's really important for you to develop a good relationship with your agent because you all I mean in my head I'm with Mel for the long term mm. I can't imagine leaving and going anywhere else so she knows, you know, 
what I would like to do as an actor, where I want to develop or what roles that I want to do. Um, so when she's looking at for roles for me, you know, we don't really clash and stuff because I'm, we're quite transparent with what it is that we, that I want for my career and what it is that Mel can offer me. Um, and being that honest and transparent, I know that she puts in the work when she puts me forward for self tapes and stuff like that. Cause your agent can only do so much. Yeah. Their job is to try and get you in through the door, which is, and based on, you know, your look, there's so many different aspects that a casting director looks at in terms of casting and, you know, you face a lot of rejection in this industry. So you have to bear in mind that when you don't get these jobs, there are so many attributes that it's not just, oh, maybe I didn't do a good job. You might have been fabulous with your acting, but it could mean that, you know, when they're placing you, it could be your look, it could be your hair, it could be your height, it could be, you know, it could be so many different things. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to kind of keep those things in mind um, when you're self-taping and stuff. But you've just got to get a good agent, someone that you believe in, someone that believes in you. And just every time you get that self-tape or you get that opportunity to be in front of somebody, just give it your best shot. That's all you can do. Just give it your best shot. I mean, mm -hmm. we're all guilty of walking away from that audition room or sending a self-tape and then thinking, oh, man, I wish I'd done this better or I wish I'd done that better. But you know, you just got to give it your best shot. Make sure you prepare as much as possible. Find a technique that works for you because you need to, <clears throat> you know, prep and know what, what you're doing for your tapes. It's not just reading the lines off the paper it, it, in character. It's just who is your character? Mm -hmm. You know, who, who are you? What are you bringing to this tape? If there's going to be 50 other people that are doing the same tape, what's going to make your tape different? Like, so it is working on your character work and giving yourself the reasons why you're even doing it in the first place. Yeah. So that's what I try and remember. Yeah, I did an amazing workshop with um, Kobe Adam um, last year and he was giving some really good pointers in terms of like making sure you know where you are, what you're saying, who you are and why you're saying it. I can't remember. I think it was the eight points that he gave and it was just so insightful. And it's, yeah. again, like, you know, try and continue as a as an actor to seek new ways of sort of like I don't know just polishing up you can you can never just be sort of like oh yeah I'm on top of my game there might be different things you want to try maybe mm. or you've done a lot of drama but you've never done comedy give it you know like give it a go go and do a master class or something like that or um or yeah if you're new to it completely then I'd always recommend obviously going into doing a course because it's all about not just the acting and the skills that you're getting but the connections that you're making it really matters who you know because so you would recommend a course because a lot of people sometimes think well do I just you know put myself on TikTok do I just you know go up for small roles but you actually think a course is beneficial yeah because it's like you know almost like saying oh just because I've done like TikTok I know how the ins and outs or yeah. of the journey an actor goes through like, you know, like when you study text and you're really breaking down text um, and how each line kind of affects you, like when you're doing, when you're in your classes, you're, you're learning how to connect with yourself. Mm. You're learning how to ground yourself. You're learning how to protect yourself. Like you're playing all these different roles and characters and embodying different characters. And what if you play a character that might be a bit sinister? Do you know how to protect yourself as an actor mm. when you're going into these different spaces and different worlds? Like, you know, then I don't, yeah, I don't know why people don't go to, I mean, I take acting seriously. Like I've studied my craft for years and I know other actors like, you know, Daniel Kalua isn't Daniel Kalua because he, he took acting lightly. Like <clears throat> we were in the same drama class together wow. and I saw the work ethic that he put in in class and outside class like he's where he is because he put in the work he put in the work in his craft and he polished his craft not only just writing but acting and understanding the business like he wasn't just an actor like he understood the environment that he was going into like that that's serious that's serious yeah. he's where he is because of that the work that he's put in and yeah. if you want to kind of be in these spaces or where he is you have to put in the work, learn I'm, your craft. I'm so glad you said that, you know, because obviously I'm I'm not from your world. I, I don't know what it is to be an actor. I wouldn't know the first thing. I can't lie. My face is like so obvious when I try. <laughs> so I really appreciate the craft. And when I'm watching movies, I'm always blown away. 
But there's this like rise of like TikTok stars that the younger generation might think, oh, okay, let me just put myself out there on TikTok. Something will happen. Somebody will sign me. And that's not the reality. So I'm really glad that you've mentioned that and that you actually say that a course is really beneficial and you need to go on the journey because sometimes people are lost. They they know they want to do something, but the how is the difficult part. Mm. That's and, true. And and there's nothing wrong with sort of like I always say to actors as well, go on TikTok, do TikTok content. Like I do not disregard anyone that's doing TikTok because that is a different skill set in itself. Yeah. So do you get what I mean? It's a different style um, of acting. Like if you want to get into like movies and films and stuff, you need to think about the content that you're putting out on TikTok. TikTok is an amazing, amazing platform. All these social media platforms are an amazing way to get yourself out there, to get yourself seen. But with that, you need to understand what your identity is and what it is that you're putting out there and what it is that you're trying to get. Because you don't want to be like, you know, typecast. If you're only just on TikTok and you do sort of like, you know, funny sort of like prank stuff or things like that, you're going to put yourself in sort of like a box. Yeah. Um, And, you know, there's like little funny videos where you mime. So I always say to people, like, do a variation of things, like get yourself out there because you never know what you might get from that. But from that, like, say if you did get an um, acting role or you booked an advert from TikTok, that's amazing. But where are you going from there? Yeah. Think about the future. So, you know, don't stop doing anything, you know, put yourself out there. Uh, but understand what it is that you're putting out in order to know what you want to receive. I love that. There's kind of like a similar argument in the presenting world as well, because I'm sure you've seen that a lot of people go on Love Island or like I'm a celeb or or on TikTok, get really big, and then they get given presenter roles, huge presenting roles. And sometimes there's this argument that it's like, what skills do they have other than being famous? I'm not putting anyone down. It's just the conversation that happens, right? People do get training, but I think it always comes back to the craft about what you're doing, what your skill set is, how can their skill set be applied in different places, you know? And I, I'm really glad you raised that because it's honestly a conversation that everyone in the presenting industry always has. Like to the point where people are like, should we even bother anymore because of TikTok if people are just going to get famous and be given these huge roles? Um, so yeah, it's interesting. I love like that you said that an acting class is really beneficial because I know that people benefit from this, especially if they're young and don't have an agent yet or decide to get into acting and don't have anywhere to start. I love that you spoke about that. Absolutely. Let's, let's talk now about the best role, in your opinion, that you've ever done or like your proudest moment. Um, I would say the one that I'm waiting for at the moment. <laughs> so, are, you, um, are you allowed to say? Well, well yeah, let me, let's talk about it. So I'm um, in a short film called um pressure and it's um directed sorry that's my cat <laughs> um, I was actually thinking is someone there I'm like is she okay <laughs> no you're like what, what's that coming out the window oh, yes. <laughs> yeah um but yeah it's a short film called pressure and it's directed by Ashley Chin um so he's had um a series of short films that have come out already so I don't know if you've seen Lawrence and I think he's just had one drop I think last week and oh my god I'm so excited because the style of everything that he's dropping looks amazing so I'm like oh my god what is this short film gonna look like but um I actually play an 18 year old in the <laughs> Girl, I love I'm that not gonna reveal you. my real age <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm not gonna reveal my real age but I play an 18 year old which was really fun and I've got like a good role in this as well. I'm um, acting with Sean Romulus in it as well. He's from Top Boy. Oh, oh my God, oh, Sean, I hope, Sean, I hope I didn't butcher your name. <laughs> it's okay. Hopefully um, you won't find out till later. Yeah, but I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also a young actor called Umar, who's also Bengali and he plays the lead. So I'm like really excited mm -hmm. for him as well for this. Um, but I play like a little, sort of like a little road girl. And I get like a moment where I get to like get a little punch in, in like a van. I act, yeah, I act oh, a little wow. bit gangster in it. I <laughs> love that for you. Congratulations. Thank you. So yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. But that whole process of working on that short film in itself was such a big learning experience. Like it was just so amazing. Again, big up my agent, Mel. She's the one that got me there. <laughs> Um, but again, like working with Ashley, like the way that the um, character was written in the script initially, she was actually quite sort of like a lot 
harsher um and she kind of like used a lot of language which was a little bit like I don't know for me because I, d I don't use that kind of language it was a little bit like distasteful and I was like oh god am I gonna have to say certain of these words yeah um, yeah and I was like so I was a little bit hesitant like when we was coming up to the street I was thinking oh how how are they gonna like direct this or maneuver this and Ashley's just incredible he was just like no I don't see her like that you're like you know um, there's only a few female characters in the film so he was like I don't want you to be like hated by everybody so you know the way that he kind of developed it the way that he guided me through the process even there was like a scene where me and Uma have sort of like a heart to heart and a one to one the way he sort of like directed it was just so incredible and it just it just made me feel so much more comfortable with my character and made me feel a lot more sort of like one mm. with my character I could so like it's, it felt like almost like as the character was being developed I was being developed and growing with it and I just learned so much from just working with him working with Shone like Shone's work ethic is just incredible again sort of like just seeing him on set and the way that he approached his character um and even like when we was in certain scenes and if I was struggling with a line like his input was just so invaluable like I learned so much from that I really I'm so excited for the project to come out and I'm just excited to see what people think I'm excited to see myself in it I'm just like oh my god what am I gonna look like as an 18 final... year old have you seen the final edit yet no, I haven't seen oh, any of it oh, I love that oh congratulations yeah. we can't wait to see it either you have to keep us in the loop for when that's out as well oh my god I definitely will 100% do you have any tips for learning lines that just popped into my head um be honest with you like learning lines right it's the most boring <laughs> It's really? the most boring part of acting. Oh my god! I mean, I've got dyslexia, so I don't know. My way might not be sort of like what everyone else does, but um, I got I think is it Jasmine from Top Boy. I saw one of her interviews one time, and um, she was asked about learning lines, and she mentioned the ten, 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 and I've been trying that, and that is working like a treat that works a lot better than whatever it was I was doing so I've kind of like taken tips from Jasmine and what you do is you read the script I think she was saying like 10 times so whatever your part is you've got to read the whole thing 10 times and that allows you to kind of like take in the storyline right and to actually know what the whole entire story is about so you've got like sort of like the gist of it who your character is throughout the whole script the beginning middle and end mm -hmm. and then um you I think you read it again or maybe oh, do you know what maybe I've adapted it a little bit because I feel I like that. I'm changing it. I feel <laughs> like I'm changing it now I'm like is this what she said or is this what I've changed your version it? it's your remake but, yeah. version so I can't remember if this is what she said because my memory's so bad or whether I'm making it up but then what I do is I read my own lines 10 times right um so say if we're um if for that particular scene, I'll read that scene again 10 times. So then that scene is now cemented in my head. I get you. And then in order to learn the little chunks, I'll like say, I'll read it again, just maybe that one little chunk 10 times. Then I'll look away 10 times. And then I'll move on to the next part. And then basically I've just gone on her theory of like, just do it 10 times every single time. Love that. I'm sure people will find that useful. I'd have to learn things yeah. sometimes as well. So yeah, my memory is not great. And obviously as an actor, you need to be on point with your lines. So it's good to know. Right. Yeah, so it's just, it's a lot of it's just repetition. Like sometimes it's good to move around. I play like instrumentals um, when I do it. So like sometimes once I've kind of feel like I've learned it, but I would, I just want, I don't want to sound like, oh, I'm thinking about the line. And if I think, oh, I'm thinking about the line too much. I'll then start spitting my lines, but really fast nice. to the music. So then I know the words, I know the words, I know the order that is going in. And then I slow it down again. And then I'm like, okay, now go back into character and try and say your lines without stuttering or Love that. forgetting where you are. So I do try different things. See, the MC in me hasn't left. See, it was <laughs> useful. There was a reason you did that. <laughs> and um, Lala, you mentioned that you've worked in different capacities in the industry. How important is that? And would you encourage um, aspiring actors or people doing their craft to try different roles in the industry? Absolutely. Especially if you're just new to the industry completely. If you're just somebody that has a passion for the industry, but you're like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know if I've got the skills to 
to where, where, where do I even go I always say like just try and get a little job especially if you're younger and just try and get a little job as a production assistant because then it allows you to be on set and then you can have a look at what happens behind the scenes because there's so many different skills like say if you're into like you're really good with like construction or building things or things like that like you know a gaffer's job is so important mm. like the DOP department and when they're like rigging things or they need to make sure that they've got to turn you know 2 p.m into like 1 a.m in the morning like they're literally constructing things in that room and building things and you know making sure it's safe at the same time in order to create these to make these things happen there's so many different roles behind yeah. the scenes it's incredible like you know if you like sort of like managing people or um, you're really good at sort of like you know with timing and scheduling or budgeting like you know like you're good at numbers or anything that you're good at could be a transferable skill mm. in the film industry it's not just about who's directing it or who's writing it or who's um, acting in it there's there's hundreds sometimes yeah. like thousands of people that come together yeah to make this happen you know, like we've got makeup artists, we've got set designers, we've got like wardrobe, we've got lighting specialists, we've got focus pullers. Like, you know, focus pulling looks so funny. It looks so <laughs> cool when they do it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, I wouldn't mind learning how to do that just so I can have the skill to do it and help I out. I feel sometimes. like you would do it as well with the amount of things you've tried. <laughs> like, honestly, because as a production assistant, because I was quite lucky, like my stepdad, Noel Wilson, he's... um a casting director but he actually started off as an actor so when I was growing up I saw him you know doing his thing as an actor like he was um I think he played like an extra in the mummy with Antonio Banderas wow. so you know he was bringing home like these pictures of him in the costume and just like wow so um, cool. he even took me on set he was um played a security guard in a film called Just Visiting and it had that actor oh oh my god how can I forget his name the actor from Leon the Frenchman, bad boy actor. Oh my God. Asking the wrong person. My, oh, name, my name, name recall. What's the film he was in? Sorry, go on. He was in Leon. Leon. Yeah, big boy actor. Leon. It says here, Jean Reno. He was Leon. Yeah. This one, Jean Reno. Oh no. No, 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 it wasn't Jean Reno. He was also in Jurassic Park, actually. He's done loads of music um movies. I think he was a he was a French actor. Okay. That geezer. But, but yeah, him. <laughs> um sorry. I didn't know. I couldn't <laughs> tell. I was so bad. I feel so bad for like forgetting his name now. But um <laughs> big boy actor. Um and I remember sitting there like watching my stepdad and then he like came over and I recognized him immediately. And as he's walked past me, that was the first time I've ever met sort of like a celebrity. And yeah. I was just like wow he looked so cool and he was like dressed up but like you get to see sort of like that human side of him and then he goes back on to sort of like set and now he's in this character so I guess seeing that from a young age it made me realize it's possible because my stepdad yeah. was taking me to these places and I was seeing it firsthand I think I was even like I even went along and I did like some extra work with him for like a tv show back in the day I used to like proper follow him around helped him out sort of like and where he sort of like went more into producing and he'd like I'm so grateful for that he you know he actually even gave me allowed me to come into these spaces with him um, and be there like I got to learn from him mm. like what a producer does and how a producer moves yeah so, yeah so I was, I was quite a, a lucky kid in the sense of I, I got a lot of insight through the people that were in my life yeah um and again like I said with WAC as well like I was lucky because WAC also had a lot of reputable actors that were in the business that used to come and teach us. So we had, you know, like Che Walker, who's a well-renowned playwright, who was like my first ever drama teacher. Um, and he was just, he, again, amazing. Like, you know, Indra Ove, um, Martina Lard, like all of these like big boy, like yeah. players in the game that hold like heavy weight. Like these are the guys that are coming and, you know, teaching us stuff and giving us, you know, feedback on how to be better and praising yeah. us where we need to pray, be praised. And, you know, you've got to be so grateful. So, um, yeah, I think as much as there was moments in my life that were a bit dark, God definitely shone the light where I needed to. That's beautiful. Lila, I love that. How has it been? Or how, what have you experienced as a woman in this industry? Have you noticed any differences or challenges that maybe men don't face? 
Um, I mean, the it is getting better now, but it is quite male dominated. I'll be honest with you, it's heavily male dominated behind the scenes. Um, and I guess that's it. I guess it tends to be because of the commitment that you've got to put into sort of like a film. Mm. Um, a lot of the roles, such as sort of like if you're a director, for example, I mean, we've got a lot more women directors now, which is great. Um, once you're on sort of like a film project, you're on that film project for the whole duration. And, you know, it's like certain films can take, you know, years to make. It's not just, oh, we've got a film and a few months later you've got a film. Mm. It takes years. And I think what the stigma has been is, oh, these roles are not sort of like grateful women because it takes up a lot of time and, you know, you've got to think about the home and kids and da-da-da-da-da. Um, so where, I guess, our lives as women has also developed and our independence has developed and our opportunities have sort of widened out where we're actually going for these positions because it's not just about, oh, there's no women there. It's because we've not been encouraged to go into that area. So now where there are more opportunities for us to learn these skills and to be in these spaces, it is opening up. But um, yeah, it, it, there's certain times where I've been on set and, you know, there's only been sort of like three or four women, but we'll be on a team of like, you know, like 30 dudes. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, um, and you just kind of, I don't know, sometimes I guess when you have sort of like a lot of guys and they have a lot of strong opinions and they're having conversations, sometimes, you know, it's been hard for me to maybe speak up in the path because you've got all of these guys talking and they've got these ideas and, you know, you think to yourself, well, you know, maybe my idea might might be a solution, but then you think, oh, but maybe they know better or you don't, you know, sometimes like I've doubted in my own knowledge or... Yeah. It's that voice in your head yeah or sometimes I'm just like well even if I get it wrong I'm not going to learn if I don't open my mouth and contribute towards the conversation and stuff so it's like building sort of that confidence to like speak up and to own my own space and to you know I don't have to be like one of the guys I can be in my feminine and have my feminine and nurturing characteristics and you need that you need a balance behind um you know behind the camera so I think it's nice when you have sort of like that female sort of like part of that because you you get a nice sort of balance of energies and just working with each other um but it is nice to see way more women sort of like taking on sort of like roles which is sort of like doing lighting and doing more of the sort of like the technical kind of stuff yeah education which is great to see. the more roles that you know about like in my head when it came to movies when I was younger I only thought oh like the person who films the director and the actors you don't realise how much goes into it. So I guess the more investment that goes into that and getting people on set, that will probably help a lot as well. Oh, absolutely. It's just, it's literally just, you know, seeing people like yourself in these spaces. But a lot of the times, you know, the main focus, like when a film comes out, the main focus is on the actors, who's directed it and you want to watch the film and no one really, you know, unless you're sort of in the business, you want to know, oh, who did this or who did that? Or, you know, if you're interested in that particular area, you might look. But it's nice when they have sort of like, you know, screenings and you see sort of like the team come up and you speak to the set designer and you're like, you know, what challenges did you have with maybe like props or, you know, they might have an elaborate wardrobe like Mad Max, for mm -hmm. example. And it's like, how did you think of the costumes or like, you know, how much work went into sort of like getting those costumes and stuff. And so many people are involved and it's it's just like you said, it's getting these people to be in the forefront, but not in the forefront, but their job roles and their job titles and their contribution towards um, the project. Yeah. I love that. Lila, I, I guess... What... Go, go on, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I was like, what you do is absolutely fabulous because you actually give a platform for people in these industries behind the scenes that don't have the time to actually come in to the forefront and actually, yeah. you know, spread the information. I love Nexus Talks for that reason, because as much as I research and do my thing, I love coming in and being like, I'm going to learn so much because I'm speaking to experts, people that know their craft, people that know their industry, and I just get to absorb so much. So honestly, I love doing it. So I'm glad that we can be a platform. I feel like I have the best job ever because I literally get to just <laughs> learn all this knowledge and meet awesome people. So I'm I'm glad that you, you like being here. That makes me happy. <laughs> no, I love it because when I like when I went onto the um, Nexus website to kind of like look at what got, what kind of interviews and stuff that you do, I was like really blown away. I was like, wow, these are really cool people. So yeah, you do have a cool job where you get to ask like the questions that you know like 
that you want to get into about certain yeah. things that people do because I was like there's such a wide variety of people from different industries yeah like completely different industries and it's like it's so exciting like you can never learn too much exactly exactly and what I'm really really happy about as well for people that listen to this because you may not listen to every single episode, but if you're in the industry and you're stuck or you're having that moment of self-doubt or you're like, how can I get better? You find someone from your industry and you listen and it's like, okay, cool. Lila tried this. Let me try that. And that's actually one thing I do want to ask you. What are your like top tips for people that are new or struggling? What are the top tips that you you think everyone should do? Top tips. Yeah. If there are any. Like, really, you really, the first thing is you really need to, you know, see if you really want it. Because with acting, especially, it's a lot of rejection, like a lot of rejection. And, you know, you have to keep your mental health well. Um, like, you know, I go through ups and downs. Like, honestly, like, I'm a person that I get a lot of soothing from achieving stuff. So when I go through, like, dry spells and stuff like that, or I've had a lot of no's, like, it can bring you down sometimes. You do think to yourself, oh, God, like, you know, I, I couldn't even tell you how many no's I've heard in my life. Yeah. So you've got to really know that you want it because, and that you, you've you got to be resilient to sort of, like, you know, some of the objections that, that you might get. You need to know, as an actor especially, what your boundaries are. You know, what kind of acting do you want to do? How far do you want to go with your acting? Like, for me... um, I know that I'm happy to do a lot of things, but I draw a line at sort of like full nudity or mm. things like that or anything of that nature. Yeah. Because I want my family and my community to be able to watch the things that I do. Yeah. So for me, that's a big thing. So I, I draw a line at things like that or I draw a line at things like horror, like things like the poltergeist and stuff because I'm really scared. <laughs> uh, it's acting. <laughs> no, I know, but like I'm quite a spiritual person and I'm just like, I Same. don't... I don't I do not touch horror. Even if there's like slightly suspenseful music, I'm like, hey, what's this on TV? You're tricking me because I'm not I'm not here for that. It's scary. And I, yeah. I think it's like, I don't mind watching it. And like you said, it is film. But some people do it really, really well. Okay? <laughs> exactly. They do it really, really well. Um, So it's just like, you know, like things like Stranger Things, I, I would love to do. But things like, I don't know, like, you know, like Paranormal Activity. I don't oh, because I don't watch like, it. I heard about it, but no, I don't know. But I couldn't. That this is what I'm saying. Like things like that really scare me. And because I'm yeah. like, oh my God, what if this ghost comes like follows me in real life? Like, I kind of I, I don't know. Like you just got to kind of know as an actor what you will do, what you won't do, what you what you really want to sort of like push yourself in, so you know what direction to go in, mm. and really sort of like, like I said before, like invest in that time. Like you're never too old to go to a class if you're young. Um, you're still in education, then you know. Drama school is definitely amazing because it's not only that you learn your craft, but you learn discipline and you learn how to look after your body physically mm. and mentally. Like these are really sort of like important things as you sort of come through challenges. So it's like I can't emphasize enough. If you're sort of like working and you're, you're like, listen, I'm in a position in my life where I'm not going to be able to support myself if if I'm not working, I have to work, yeah. which is a lot of us right now. It's a hard time. Um, I always say to them, don't worry, like you can still learn if if you're able to, you know, pick up a part time course in like Central, RADA, Lambda. There's so many reputable um, drama schools out there that offer drop in sessions or short courses. If money is an issue, again, I just say to people, don't worry. If at the moment financially things are like, you know, you're like, look, I'm not in a position to invest that in. Find a local drama group. Go to your community centre even find if you've got actor friends or you know groups of people set up your own little group friendship group where you're like okay maybe I can learn from my friends that are doing it do some improv have fun with it like there's always things that you could be doing in order to better yourself because acting is all about playing mm. do you get what I mean you can play anywhere give yourself a scenario and go have some fun like you know me and my friends, when we were kids, like we used to go central London, right? To like Trafalgar Square. And we used to put on American accents and pretend we were like tourists and stuff and ask for directions. And we'd be like, you know, and excuse me, like, you know, do you know where Trafalgar Square is? And they'll be like, you're standing in it. I'm like, oh, no way. I went, guys, we're in Trafalgar Square already. Thanks. Like, all like, 
we used to pretend we were capoeira dancers and we used to like proper set up, start warming up like we're about to do some capoeira, do one, two moves that we learned off the internet and then just walk off because obviously we don't know how to do it. Yeah, and but unless someone like there actually does it, they won't know. No, but we actually built a crowd and people would come over like, oh, what's going on? Let's have a look. Da, 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 da. And then we'd just walk off. That's so, so like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, just dumb things. Like as a kid, like, especially when you're a kid, you're fearless. Mm. Like these are the times, this is why I'm always talking to sort of like the young people because as adults, you you know, you, you've got a mind of your own. You can think for yourself. Like, you know, I'm not trying to preach to people that have lived life, but for the kids out there, because, you know, I love my young people um, and I always want to be honest with them um, because, you know, I don't want to sell them a dream. And then they're just like, you know, I, I remember as a young person when I got told misinformation and it's just just want to try and avoid any kind of yeah. disappointment. Like it's hard work. You need to learn discipline. You need to study your craft. You need to like do these things, but you can keep it fun. It doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be like, ah, oh, this is, feels like work. No, have fun with it. Like you said, go on TikTok, find some funny videos with your friends. Like build that confidence for you to be like, Do you know what, I'm now I'm ready to go and act with some people in real life. Like, you know, and there's so many different things. Like I also studied like physical theatre. So I did like a lot of clowning, a lot of like miming, a lot of like mask work, pantomime blanche. Like, you know, there's so many different parts of like, acting that you can really explore to find out what it is that you like doing and you might find actually I love theatre because I like to be expressive with my body and actually I'm like fabulous at dancing I'm fabulous at singing so why can't you be a triple threat like there's no one telling you you've got to do one thing you could be an actor and a producer you can be a writer and a director and a producer you know you could be a DOP and still write like you know nobody should be able to put you in a box that you haven't put yourself in like do you get what I mean <laughs> like drop <laughs> I love that but honestly like just take away all of those barriers take away that sort of like negative voice like and it's easier to say it because these are the same challenges that I still go through yeah so it's not like you know the same advice that I give you is the same advice that you know sometimes I'm looking in the mirror and saying to myself saying you know don't worry about that job pat yourself on the shoulder be like you know it's okay like you'll get the next one don't worry about it or you know I might be feeling low and I'll ring up my friend and be like hey you want to do a content day like you know luckily when you sort of like grow up in the industry and this is another good thing about going to classes you build a network of people that are you know have the like-minded attitude and like-minded sort of like drivers you, which yeah. allows you to be in a circle that's motivating, that's helping you become a, a better version of yourself. You don't you don't want to be around constantly around people that are putting you down. That's another thing. If you have a dream and you want to go for it or you want to do acting, don't wait for anybody in your circle to do it with you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you'll never do it. Like, don't wait. This is why I say know that you really want it because there are going to be times when no one really wants to believe in it or no you know there might be a theater show that you're like oh my god I really want to go I might be inspired by it but no one wants to go with you because they're not into it mm. that's fine yeah go experience it go into class make new friends that are like oh my god I'll come with you mm. I've always wanted to do that like do you know what I mean find the people that are part of your tribe and honestly learning and growing will become so much easier I love that Thank you so much, Lila, honestly. And your passion is honestly phenomenal because you're right. People do have moments of self-doubt and your voice can play around with you, that voice in your head and make you feel like, you know, it's not going to happen. But I love your passion. I love that you're so in it for the craft. And honestly, I wish you the best of luck with pressure and everything else. Where can people find you in case they want to follow you or reach out? Um, yeah, so my main socials would be instagram i'm so bad with socials so yeah instagram would be the one where you can find me so my at is i am lila Begum. just kept it simple <laughs> simple um, what we again, like. yeah for any acting stuff obviously my agent melanie girl talent can't big her up enough honestly love my agent so much big up the whole mgt squad got to say that properly um yeah no the team the team is solid solid um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, you know, I've got like a TikTok and stuff if you find me on TikTok, but it's got like 70 followers or something. I'm not really 
on TikTok or anything like that. But yeah, but I'm open to collaborations and things. So feel free to DM me. I mean, I got a message the other day when someone was like, oh, um, what prison did you use when you shot just two drops? So I'm quite responsive. So I just messaged her back and I'm not a gatekeeper. Sent her the link. Okay. I was like, hey, what's going on? I was like, no problem. Here's the link. Here's the furthermore, here's the number. Is on the website. I'll meet you there. <laughs> we'll go to yeah. the together. <laughs> you get what I mean? So, you know, if there's anything that you've watched of mine that you think, oh, I would love to ask, you know, love to ask me a question um, about any of the projects that I've done or if you want any sort of like feedback, support, always hit me up. Like I said, with my young people, I've got time all day long. Um, and for the bigger people out there, of course, we'll talk on a big people level. <laughs> Lila, thank you so much. Please keep us in the loop for when pressure's out. Any like screenings or anything, please do let us know. And thank you again for like rearranging this with us. Oh, anytime. It's been such a pleasure to speak to you. So thank you for giving me the platform. Always.